Hey everyone, today I want to have another look at Fusion and focus on the relay specifications, the relay server specifications, and in particular the node pattern or the global object identification pattern. With Fusion, we can take advantage of subgraphs that implement this specification and basically get to a zero configuration distributed GraphQL setup. And we also want to have a look at how we can re expose things like the node field through the gateway so we can build awesome applications with Relay. Before we get started, we are running workshop throughout the year at several conferences in person in Europe or online if you cannot make it to one of our in-person events. In our workshops, we will be diving deep into the patterns that companies like Netflix, Facebook or GitHub use to build their GraphQL setups. And we are not just focusing in on the backend. We will learn GraphQL from the backend to the front end by using hot chocolate and react and relay in the front end. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. So I have basically the same setup than last time. So we have two subgraphs here, accounts and reviews. This time both are implemented with hot chocolate, but that's more incidental. We could also use again, something like Apollo or any other GraphQL server. In this case, if we look at the subgraph, can go here to the the program CS, we can see it's a typical setup that you would have with hot chocolate. We have here our type auto registration. We use DB context here, so entity framework that we register here. But then here we have the add global object identification pattern that we added to our schema. So let's have a look at what this really means. So I'm starting here my account subgraph. Then we are opening banana cake pop, creating a new tab and have a look at our GraphQL endpoint here. If we go to the schema explorer here and go to the column view, we can dive in and then we can see there's this node and nodes. When I go here, I can see that the node interface that this field returns is for instance, a user here. So what is the nodes pattern about? Let me show you that with the little application because it's very front end driven. So when we build GraphQL front end applications like this, let's have a look at the developer tools. I focused in here on GraphQL requests. And now I'm going here to the Bitcoin details page. So when I go here, you can see we are doing one GraphQL request and I could take that request and copy it as curl and go to banana cake pop here, paste that in. And then I can see that we are actually loading all the data for all the components. So each of these fragments refer to data from one of our UI components. If I run that, you can see it's fetching quite some data with a lot of data points for our chart there. And this is super efficient because we fetched everything that we needed to fill up this view of the front end. If I go back here and for instance, dive into one of the other categories here, like the data points for a week, then you can see we have another GraphQL request, just one more. And we could dive in here, copy it as curl again, then paste it as the one before. And what you can see is that we're actually just refetching with Relay the data data for one of the components, the component that we needed to update. And we're doing that by using the global object identification pattern, because anywhere in our graph, any entity actually implements the node interface. And by doing so implements a single identifier by which I can look up this entity through this node fields in a generic way. And that basically allows me to fetch the difference to the data I need to render my new component state here. And in this case, if I just fetch that, you can see we're just fetching the data points instead of all the other static data that we have here. And this we can actually reuse in our GraphQL gateway because there we also have to fetch these patches whenever one of the properties is on a different subgraph. So let me show you how we can put that together. So we're going back here to our little project. The first thing we're going to do, and I already installed here the tools for us, so the fusion tools, but we still need to set up our gateway here and also 
configure our subgraphs. I set zero configuration, so we're not gonna create any configuration for our subgraph like I showed in the last video. We're gonna straight go to our subgraph here. And what you can see is that we don't have any schema exported yet. And as I showed last time, we can basically run our subgraph here to export our schema without actually running it. So we don't need to start up the server and stuff. We just gonna export with the schema export command, the schema. So I'm doing a .NET run our account subgraph here. Then we're gonna do a dash dash schema export and we wanna dump it in the schema GraphQL file. So I'm doing that. If you see here this SQL, that is just because in my demo, I always make sure that the database is created. So in a real proper application, there would be no data call because we immediately intercept actually the command here and do not start the server at all. We just create essentially the schema from the code first approach. We're gonna do the same to our other subgraph. I'm doing a schema export here, but in this instance, we're gonna get the reviews subgraph. And then we have everything there to build our gateway. The first thing we did last time was also to pack the subgraph configuration. So I'm doing that here for accounts, and then I'm doing that for reviews. With these configurations set up, we finally can create our gateway. I'm using again our template here. So I'm doing a .NET new GraphQL a gateway. Okay, my gateway is there. We don't do anything to our gateway. We leave it as is, but we still need to compose the configuration for it. So we pack the subgraph configuration. The next thing is we need to compose our gateway here. So I'm doing a .NET Fusion compose here for the count subgraph. And next I'm doing the same for the review subgraph. With this, our gateway is ready. We can go to Banana Cake Pop and have a look at it. And here we go to the schema tab to have a look at the schema itself. So you can see here's the query type. I can dive in and all the types are composed here. So I have all the review types and all the user types. I didn't write any configuration, but it's fully merged. And if I want to do, I can dive into the user type here, go to user, and you can see there we have the reviews field, so the data are put correctly together. And just birthday ID name and username actually live on the account subgraph, and ID name and reviews actually live on the review subgraph. Okay, that worked awesome. What I'm missing here is the node and the node field because we didn't configure the gateway to implement the global object identification pattern of the relay specification. But that's still good for us. Let's write maybe a simple query and dive actually into that user. So I'm going here into the users nodes. So I'm grabbing here some user data. And if I run that, then you can see that I'm getting here the data. But I also already enabled here the GraphQL query plan. So I can have a look at what is actually happening here in the gateway. So let's collapse the data segment here and have a look at the query plan. And what I can see here is I'm having a sequence of query plan nodes. And the first one is just fetching some data from the account subgraph. And basically it's a one to one request here. So we do a request and we just one to one push it to the account subgraph. And after that, we compose actually the data that we have and ship it to the user. But let's maybe dive into the reviews here. And from the reviews, we take the body and we rerun the same thing. So this time we get more data. And if we look at the query plan, actually, it also looks bigger. So what's striking here is that the first request is not against the account subgraph, but against the review subgraph. And we're going to fetch the most of the data from there because most of the data is available on both subgraphs. Like ID name is also available on the review subgraph. But the birth date is only available in the accounts data. So I need to export here the actual user ID for internal usage. And then we're going to batch that into the second subgraph. And we didn't provide any metadata for batching because we don't need to because we have the nodes field on the other subgraph. So we know when we composed the gateway, we inspected the schemas and saw that it's implementing the relay specification. And that means we now can write here a query to the second subgraph using the nodes field where we batch all the IDs that we collected in and then have here an inline fragment and just fetch the birth date for the user entity. 
entities. And we are actually re-exposing the ID of the object here. So we know which element is belonging to which part of the graph. So in, in case a batching query doesn't give us the items in the correct order back, we don't really care because we know which item belongs where in our graph. Okay, that's great. So I already have a super performing distributed GraphQL setup without doing a single configuration just by implementing the relay specification. Let's actually go back to our console and then we reconfigure our gateway to not only use the relay global object identification pattern to make data fetching super fast, but also to allow us to use the nodes field in our client application. And to do that, I'm doing the same composition, but this time I'm passing on this parameter here, dash dash enables nodes. So basically enable the node pattern in the gateway. And then we can just go back to banana cake pop here, refresh the schema, and then we have the global object identification pattern implemented on the gateway and can use these fields. So to test that out, let's actually grab here a user ID. Then we're gonna go for the node field here. We want to have the ID and actually we cannot get anything else here because that's the interface. So we can just get the ID or the type name by default, but that's enough for now. Let's have a look what happens if we execute that. You can see we get the ID here. That's not the interesting part. On the query plan side, we now have a new shape here, the resolve node shape, and it has here a couple of branches to execute other tasks. In this instance, it has a resolve task here to fetch from a subgraph. So the resolve node task will basically pass the ID, inspect what type this ID is about, and then pick one of the branches here. So if it's review, we go to the review subgraph. And if it's a user, we go to the account subgraph and ask for the data we need here. So, and don't worry if we don't understand the ID pattern that you have, you actually can implement for the gateway, a small interface that translates the ID logic here. So we have a couple of defaults that are popular in GraphQL, but if you, for instance, use ID ranges, you could also do that and just implement then this interface and inject that in our gateway. Okay, in our case, let's do a bit more complex stuff. So we're gonna write here actually an inline fragment and, and then we're gonna go for the data we already had, reviews and the birth date. So basically the same data we went before and we execute that and let's inspect the query plan here. So the query plan again is a resolved node here. So we have our branches and this branch actually is not so interesting it's a review branch and we already know we're not gonna go here but the user branch actually also goes now to the reviews subgraph because the review subgraph also implements the node pattern or the global object identification pattern and implements node, the node interface for user. So we have a user object on the review subgraph that implements the node interface. And that signals to the gateway that we can also resolve the user node from this subgraph. So if you implement a node interface for an entity on a subgraph, you signal to the gateway that it can use the subgraph graph to actually resolve the data for this entity from there if we do a nodes query. And that is cool. So we are just gonna go for the data that we have on the review subgraph for this thing. And we again, re-export here the ID of the user. And then we use the nodes field on the account subgraph to fetch the rest of the data here. In this case, the birth date. And in this case, we are not using the batching field because we know it's just a single item that we fetch because we are using here the node. So if we were to use a nodes field here, instead of node, we would again do batching and handle that in there. Okay, that was it actually. It's a great way to build a complex distributed GraphQL setup with great performance without doing a lot of work for it. And also re-exposing the nodes field on the gateway allows you to use all the capabilities in Relay to build super awesome and fluent applications. What do you think? Sound out in the comments. If you want to help our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. This really helps us to grow the project and bring it to more people. And with this, we're done. I'm out.